Hello everybody! This video is going to be a walkthrough on how to unlock the first rule achievement in Legends of Kingdom Rush. So, this one is a specific combat encounter that you can only find in Krumthax Dominion. For this specific encounter, I'm going to be using Bruxa, the Ranger, and the Orc Cleaver. Now normally, this specific setup is pretty tricky to pull off in Krumthax Dominion because it's the one where you get the least amount of experience points to level up your units. And it's very important to level up your units when you have the Orc Cleaver because Parry Stance makes and breaks him. Likewise, Bruxa gets so much better as she levels up, so it's also important to level her up. But the reason why I want to bring this specific team is that Bruxa does 3 damage with her Voodoo Blast, but with Skulls, she's able to one-shot the enemies that have 4 HP, such as Wolves and Goblin Archers, which is very handy. For this uh, adventure. Likewise, you can one-shot them with the poison arrow of the ranger, even at level 1. So you can uh, dedicate all of your promotion points to the orc cleaver and to Bruxa. So let's begin. Unlike the other achievement that I covered in another video about how to unlock the barbarian, the combat encounter that you get to unlock that one was any single troll combat encounter and it didn't matter what the actual icon was. However, here, it does matter. You have to get one of these specific Armored Orc combat encounters. And as you can see, there's only one per path that you can choose. So I'm only going to get one chance on this adventure to actually get it. So once again, it's all based on RNG. You're not guaranteed to get it when you um engage in the Armored Orcs, but you have a chance to get it. So you just have to keep playing Kremtex Dominion until you eventually get it. So, like always, I'm going to be showcasing how to make it through this adventure with this specific party. So this one is a perfect showcase of uh, how to use them. As you can see here, I can move my ranger up and then one shot this goblin archer. He's the first one to get a turn, although it doesn't really matter because all of my units are front loaded here. Now I'm going to move the orc up and keep him here so that the goblin is baited to come attack him. Then I'm going to move Bruxa over here where she's safe from the goblin archer and I can kill this goblin over here. And so now this goblin's gonna go over here and get himself killed because he's gonna get counterattacked. There we go. And now I'm just gonna keep all of my units here. I am going to move uh, Bruxa up just by one, but it's just helpful to keep them here so that way uh, I can finish him off easily. So now I'm just going to move him up and then shoot him overkill. And there we go. So it's it's uh, pretty easy to win with this um, group of units because you already have a single melee one to tank and he does good damage, which makes it really easy to um, increase Bruxa's skull count fast. As long as she doesn't have the first turn, she's uh, a lot more effective. So uh, once again, I can shoot this guy right away and give Bruxa a skull. So now she can do more damage. Now I can move her up here and attack this goblin. So now he's out of the picture. And now I'm just going to anticipate um, his arrival by moving the orc back. So here he comes. And now I'm just going to um, bombard him with true damage. So there's that. I'm just going to keep him there. Now I can move Bruxa up. Attack him with this. There we go. And now he's practically dead. Although, just for some extra overkill, I'll hit him with this. So there we go. Also, if he had more HP um, than I would have been able to deplete in that time, then I would have not attacked with the orc. So that way he could um, gain enough armor to completely tank that uh, specific attack from him. So, here we go with... Uh, some luck based events. Luckily I got um, Invigoration on the Ranger. Now between my two options I'm just going to level up a uh, parry stance right away. It's very handy to have the increased amount of armor for the Orc Cleaver so that way he can uh, tank more attacks without um, suffering HP damage because there are a lot of attacks that will do more than three damage to him and so he might lose all of his armor right away. So here's a good example of a bunch of units that are really handy to uh, take out with uh, 4 true damage or more. So let me move this guy up here. Shoot the archer down. 
Now I can use uh, Bruxa to finish off this one. And here comes the archer. Now I'm just going to um, move the orc cleaver down and then engage in parry stance. It's not like he's going to parry more than one thing anyways, but he gets damage reduction for activating this, so I might as well. And luckily he was able to actually one-shot him, so that's good. So now let me just uh, hit this guy with more attacks. Now the archer won't be in range to uh, hit any of my other units if I keep him back here, so that's what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to move the orc up, prepare him for a counterattack. Yeah, and sure enough, he's able to handle all that. Now I have a chance to be able to finish him off with uh, the ranger if I'm lucky, but I'm just going to um, guarantee that I killed this guy instead. And now I can finish him off with uh, Bruxa, so that's what I'm going to do instead. So moving right along. Now I'm going to uh, head down to this one. I'm still not going to level up just in case I uh, get another event. Oh, here we go. We got the uh, Bombardier. Fine with me. So I'm comfortable with uh, leveling up Bruxa. I'm going to get Voodoo Bomb because it's uh, good area damage for all these uh, goblin enemies. Although um, there are plenty of cases where her Voodoo Ritual is a lot better. This is probably one of the only times that I actually like this one instead. Big surprise. I had to cut to a different recording because I did not get the combat encounter that I was looking for during the initial recording. So, in this one, I have the Witch Doctor as an ally, but more about that later. This combat encounter is easily identified by the three footmen that are surrounded by enemies. So it's similar to the other two achievements where you have to keep at least one unit alive. In the villager encounter for the demon lord combat, you have um, the ones to protect completely surrounded by enemies, so they're in danger of being attacked by all of these guys. So the strategy here is to try to focus on eliminating one or more corners of uh, the map worth of enemies, so that way they're not able to attack the footmen. So because I have a level 2 witch doctor, I'm going to take advantage of his innate trait to deal plus 1 damage if he attacks without having moved in order to finish off that one goblin archer. So now that's just one less threat um, that would be able to shoot these footmen. Similarly to the uh, young barbarian encounter, you only need one of these guys to be alive in order to um, get the achievement. So two of them can be used to the um, best of your abilities to be as effective as possible, while one of the other ones can be retreated and kept safe. So that way, um, you get the achievement. You just have to have that one be alive. So I'm retreating both of these guys, but unfortunately he's in range of getting attacked by this guy anyways. Now I'm going to move this one um, just by one space so that way he isn't attacked by this uh, big ogre here with his area attack. And this was actually a mistake in hindsight because he gets shot by the goblin archer anyways. I could have just let him get attacked by uh, that ogre so that way he could deal um, some collateral damage to this big orc champion here. However, it's not like it would have killed him anyways, because he's just got so much armor and health. But I'm going to um, move Bruxa over here, and I'm not going to um, attack either of those two just yet. I'm going to bide my time a little bit, because I want to um, be able to finish off... Uh, I want to be able to finish off the ogre with one big hit. So here we go healing this extra footman, even though I technically don't need to as long as I just keep one of the footmen alive. But I'm going to do that because it allows him to tank some of the damage from uh, these other enemies. Now I was uh, safe in moving up uh, with Bruxa earlier because these enemies are still not in reach to be able to um, attack any of my units now. So he's going to get dangerously close, but he's not going to be able to attack. The goblin archer can attack, but it doesn't matter. So here's the moment of truth. I can one-shot this guy with Brooks's level 3 ability. I love this ability. It does so much damage. It's basically disintegrate, but without as big of a drawback. So now that that uh, major threat is out of the way, what I'm going to do is just focus on uh, whittling these enemies down. I practically have them in checkmate already, but because I have the Witch Doctor, I'm going to use the uh, very useful strategy of uh, delaying 
my victory. So that way I can give him the chance to recharge his healing ability. So that way I can just keep on healing my units. Therefore, I will be able to finish the combat encounter with the uh, full HP. So, uh, one thing to note here that's kind of interesting is that this goblin archer is in range to attack the footman, but prioritizes attacking Bruxa instead. Even though normally, they will prioritize attacking the um, achievement enemies. Well, they're enemies to the um, enemies, but they're going to prioritize attacking the achievement-based units more than even your hero. But this case was an exception. So... There needs to be more research into the enemy AI in order to determine why they actually do this. Now, as you can see here, I'm one turn away from being able to heal Bruxa. So I'm just going to uh, finish off this guy that's stuck over here. And I'm going to get this goblin to low health, but not actually kill him. So I'm going to uh, keep all of my units back. And I'm going to um, hope that this goblin archer will uh, prioritize attacking the orc, and sure enough, he does. If not, though, it wouldn't have mattered, because I would just um, heal Bruxa a second time. So I'm going to keep him here and not attack him. That way, I get the opportunity to heal Bruxa. And now that she's at full HP, I can just move up and then finish off this archer. So that's the uh, best way to take advantage of having the Witch Doctor on your team. And that's the way to get the first roll achievement with uh, two footmen alive, actually. So I hope this helps. Have a good day, everybody, and good luck.